Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I thought I had no content today, but Celtic have left something very late and something to talk about. Nick Hammond has left Celtic, another person to leave in what has been a, a string of departures over the past few months. Um, yeah, it's one that I think we've all been expecting, we were all kind of looking forward to, but certainly something to talk about. Let's have a look at what Nick Hammond had done at the club, uh, let's look at what it means now moving forward, and overall let's just talk about the situation right after the intro. So over the past hour, Celtic announced on the social media is that uh, Nick Hammond will be leaving the club to pursue opportunities elsewhere. It's a, a, a sort of departure we all expected. Look, we've had Neil Lennon leave, we've had Peter Law announce his resignation, Scott Brown's going to Aberdeen now. This is the kind of final piece of the puzzle um, and creating a, a very widespread change at Celtic, a, a sort of culture change heading into next season. Neil Hammond was, uh, of course, very influential to the club when it came to transfers and such. Um, and, and there was one that I think that most Celtic fans will agree in. We, we needed to see him go. It was a change that was much needed. And, and now it kind of opens the door to bring in this new sort of director of football role and now start the new approach of how things work at Celtic. Um, they spoke about in the statement, you know, former positions at Reading and West Brom and such. Nick Hammond was brought in a trial um, and, and should have been given a job. I think he was brought in a trial, in fact, because he was pals with Lennon. Which is just another, it kind of highlights the, the decision making, how poor it's been over the past few years that that's how he got in. Um, because he had that connection with Neil Lennon. We've been talking about this old Pals Act, you know, with, with Peter Law. Well, it seemed to have happened here in this situation too. Um, it's very frustrating um, that, that, you know, the decisions that get made at the club are based off things like this. But it is now um, a door closed for another to open. Uh, and I'm very excited at the prospect of us bringing in now someone like a Fergal Harkin um, to start the new generation of how things work at Celtic. So Nick Hammond, what did he do at the club and how can we remember his, well, I don't even know what word to use, spell here at the club, how can we sum it up? Well, obviously brought in as the head of football operations, his, his main kind of focus was to look at the recruitment and such. And, you know, from the, the day that Conjurton left, I didn't think recruitment could get much worse. Look, Conjurton's recruitment was never great. Uh, it was not... You know, there was obviously players in there who we, we can't deny were fantastic. We've had the likes of Dick Bailey, Sinclair, um, Edward. There was some, some great players. But for the amount of duds and, and useless signings we made, um, it kind of was, it showed how poor things were. But I didn't think they could get worse. And, and they certainly did. Um, and Nick Hammond's transfer business uh, dealings was... <sighs> Now we all sat here at the start of this window and you know member Celtic put up the tweet just sitting here thinking what a window um, talking about the kind of taking the dig at Charlie Nicholas. Charlie Nicholas came out and said that the business was shocking and he was kind of vindicated in that and Nick Hammond now is the one who kind of took the blame and, and has to really take the, I mean granted I, I'll, I'll back up uh, the likes of a Yeti and Barkas as much as I can and say I feel like they've been bizarrely mismanaged, I feel like their chances have been few and far between, I feel like they've not had a chance to get proper football but at the end of the day, um, Nick Hammond has been the one held responsible for wasting the likes of £5 million on both of those players. Uh, £6 million, in fact, for Barkas, £5 million for a Yeti. It was money that went down the drain in poor recruitment. And, and it's, for as good as it looked on paper at the time, um, the amount of money that we shelled out on them, the amount of money we, sh we shelled out, the likes of uh, Shane Duffy's wages on a, a loan deal and, and probably Laxalves as well, and all these different signings that we've made over the past year and a half, um, it really goes to show that we needed that change and Nick Hammond was a big part of the problem. Don't get me wrong, we weren't good enough in the park and maybe with a different manager, um, those signings would have been decent, but um, you know, it's not as if you can just give him a free pass here. The criticism was warranted um, and it was a change that had to be made at Celtic. On the screen now, at both sides, are the two seasons that Nick Hammond has been here, the two full seasons Nick Hammond has been here and transfers that he has is, is overseen. Um, when you look at that entire list, um, it's a joke. It's laughable and it's rather embarrassing to say the least when you look at the amount of money that's been shelled out on absolute duds. Um, players that have came in and had zero impact, players have came in and have been humiliating to us. <laughs> um, it, it's really it's eye opening um, and, and for as much as we've seen success in the terms of his first season, we went on to win a quadruple or finish finally a quadruple treble. Um, you know, for as much success as there, look at look at just some of the names here. Patrick Clamalo, who I'm a fan of and I think will come good at one point. Spent what two and a half, three million pounds on him, and he's had no impact. Um, you look at the players like Bolling Bolly Golly, one season, then loaned out to Istanbul. You look at this season as we've already spoke about uh, five million pounds on a Yeti, six million pounds on Barkas. This is a joke. 
Um, and that's that's the reason we needed this change. That's the reason we needed Hammond to go. We need to change this structure of how things work here because uh, for as much as we know Celtic are a team who need to spend quite shrewdly, um, we need to watch what we're doing. We're not in, a, in the same financial position as Cobbs down in England. We need someone who's going to utilise the money we do have because that's still a lot of money we've been shelling out over the last couple of years. In terms of Celtic's transfer spending, that's quite big. Um, and it's going in absolute garbage. So we need a director of football, we need a head coach, we need this new system to, to not only sign players who are going to be worth the money, but to sign players who are going to get money's worth out of for years to come. Because it doesn't seem like we're getting that with the direction we're going in. Kamala, for example, as much as I want him to get a chance, was he ever going to get it under Lennon and such? We need this new system to right the wrongs of what we've seen under Hammond and Lennon. So, in terms of the bigger picture, what does this departure mean? Well, it means that the door is now open, as we've already touched on, for the director of football to come in. And I think now we can maybe start to see the wheels being put in motion. We're never going to, you know, for as much as we've been hearing rumours for weeks about Fergal Harkin coming to Celtic, we're never going to have the announcement of a director of football, whether it be Fergal Harkin or not, coming to the club while Nick Hammond was still here. Because it's not exactly the same role let's get that like in the air right now it's, it's, there's, there is differences between what Nick Hammond does and what a director of football does um, but they were never going to make that announcement while Nick Hammond was still at the club because it would have left Hammond in a situation where you know of course we expect him to leave anyway but the, the only option for him to go down the only route at Celtic for him to go down would have been to be like head scout which if we're judging off the signings was something that should never be on the table for him um, but now that he's gone we can now get the wheels in motion if we've not already which I expect we have we should be getting more conversations held with candidates for that job we should hopefully be getting an announcement as soon as possible in my eyes I mean Fergal Harkin the one who has been spoken about the most if we've got that done we should expect an announcement soon but more importantly it kind of points to the direction of hopefully the managerial announcement coming soon or the head coach announcement coming soon um, because of this now we've got that complete clear out that's it I think that we're all kind of ready to go we're ready for this next year at Celtic um, we've got Lennon gone Law's leaving we know Dominic Mackay's coming in uh, Scott Brown's going and now Nick Hammond's going you know this is the, the, the proper the fresh fresh fr fresh slate um, and, and that, that's fantastic so I can't wait to see what happens over the next couple of weeks I hope Celtic don't stall on it for too long I think us as fans for as much as we went through this season and suffered in terms of what we've seen on and, and off the park in fact for as much as we've suffered as fans we deserve to be given some answers we deserve to be given news appointments over the next few weeks to make up for what this has been um, especially for the fact we've sat and watched uh, you know all the games from home and everything I think they need to try and put a smile on the face of Celtic fans and get the business done um, so I'm excited to see what this, this does now with Hammond leaving in terms of when the director of football announcement comes um, I would suspect that the Fergal Harkin announcement will be only a matter of time now if it's him um, and I'm assuming it will be him um, coming in from Manchester City very exciting I think that right there it spells a lot more a guy that's worked at Manchester City for quite a while now in fact I think that's a lot more ambitious than what we had with, with Nick Hammond Nick Hammond whose past was at West Brom and Reading Celtic should always be aiming higher than that and by getting somebody in from Manchester City I think um, and, and I know he's not strictly worked in that role before but getting somebody there that's worked at a top level um, club both on and off the park is, is going to rub off well on Celtic so I'm hoping for that announcement rather soon but there we go Nick Hammond is gone let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below I'm going to do a video tomorrow in regards to Nick Hammond and his signing so watch out for that um, going to kind of go through them all and um, just speak about what a mess it was and the money that went on nothing it seems yes anyway like and subscribe it's much appreciated and i'll see you all next time